The views expressed here are those of the authors and do not in any way represent the views of Sophia TV. I hope you've made yourself comfortable and made yourself a cup of tea and coffee. Now we're going to discuss the subject of polygamy. You heard me correctly, we are going to be discussing polygamy in Islam. So ladies, I'm going to put it out there, honest opinions. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, is, are we practicing polygamy in the correct way? I mean Islamically, and do men take this for granted? So do they use this as an excuse? What are your thoughts? I know you're dying to say something. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> well, it is allowed by Islamic law. We all know that. Mm -hmm. it, and, but then it is abused. We all know that as well. The verse that deals with the polygamy itself t has two conditions in it, as far as I understand it. And I'm not an interpreter of the Quran, so don't take my word for it. Go and review it yourself and check with the ulama and uh, be satisfied, satisfied that what I'm saying is accurate. Um, I see two conditions. At the beginning, it's referring to orphans. It, mm -hmm. And then towards the end of the verse, it says, if you are worried that you can't do total equality or justice among all those wives, then stick with one. Mm -hmm. In the same uh, uh, chapter, Allah then goes on to speak about uh, men, uh, sorry, in, in, in chapter 33, Allah uh, goes on to speak about not having created men with two hearts in their chests. So the doing of justice among all those women Accurately, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. In the in, in in chapter three, the same ch uh, chapter uh, about w women and nisa, that 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 allows the uh, for polygamy. Also, in the same chapter, goes on Allah to say, says, you can you cannot be just to all women, even if you tried. So don't go completely leaning to one side. So if it's so obvious though, and there are so many that you know that is in the Quran, and that's what it says, then why are people practicing it so much? Why not? Well, <laughs> they're men. <laughs> they <laughs> will be. <laughs> well, hold on. Um, yeah. Again, this happens a lot in our faith that we interpret verses of the Quran, and as we said, we're not scholars mm -hmm. and we're not theologists. That we are, you know, we're dissecting the Quran. Mm. But when we're discussing things such as treat all wives equally, mm. for those of us who have children, I think you can be honest here that. We don't treat them equally. You may have a child that has specific needs. Mm -hmm. You may have a teenager who's off in a strop. You know, you have these children, you obviously love them all, but you don't treat them all. It's impossible to treat them all the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, if we do that in our everyday lives with our children, our friendships, our colleagues at school, surely it's the, s the same principle applies to marriage. Which is why, why it says, mean? don't lean completely to one side. In the same verse, mm -hmm. Yeah, to mm -hmm. one side. Yes. But then you jump into the second condition. Why not just, you know, start from the beginning, like, you know, like him was saying, you know, the condition of, of um, or is it now, how, we, how does that? Orphans at the orphans, beginning. Right? Orphans, right? So it's kind of, it's kind of, I don't know, for me, it's quite clear it's if if you know it's for certain conditions it's it's a mercy from god mm. basically god has given us this option mm. to use it whenever we need it mm. so it's not something just because well i feel like it and mm. i want to have fun mm. and, you know i'm just going to go and marry mm. a second or a third mm. it's like it's like divorce okay it's not something that we want to do but it's but there it's as there. an option. Yeah, mm. that's true. But then so the argument from God is, uh, from the brother's viewpoint, is that women pick and choose. Mm. So if this is um, something that we have in Islam, yeah. and who's to say who's, what, whose needs are what, for example, then why can't they use this provision? And why is it most of the time that they feel that women create obstacles for them to, for males to practice their rights well, as they would say. That's a really generic sweeping statement. Mm -hmm. Some women are happy to participate in polygamous relationships, polygamous marriages, and that's absolutely fine, but there's obviously mm -hmm. other women that are not. Mm -hmm. And I think it's on a sort of case by case basis. Yeah, it depends. Uh, yeah, it depends, it depends on the on couple. how you view marriage. Well, what, to, what does marriage mean to you? What kind of marriage you're in? Um, is it companionship? Are you friends with your husband? Mm -hmm. And if you are friends as such, then you'd feel betrayed if he would go and, and find another mm -hmm. companion mm -hmm. and, and call him, you know, I my soulmate kind mm -hmm. of thing. I think it's important just to reiterate that this is our own opinions. As we said, we're not scholars and stuff, but we're giving viewpoints on, 
you know how women really feel and maybe yeah. not have an opportunity to view it and obviously we're not representing the whole of you know the muslim sisterhood but it's yeah. experiences it's our own opinions yeah. basically yeah. but you know i find that in this situation you don't really know how you would react until no. you're in the situation mm. I, I, I my view is you know, as, as a practicing muslim i'm not wearing the hijab as a fashion statement as god is my witness <laughs> right if my husband came to me and said to me darling i want to marry another woman yeah of course i'm sure it's going to be like oh, ee, you know it's like mm -hmm. punch beneath mm -hmm. the uh, mm. belt uh, but my questions will be is she an orphan the first one does she Secondly, have to be in what are you or does she you have does she have you know is she a widow does she have kids that she yes. can't look after by herself yes. or whatever she but cannot provide yes. them but then we're not really in that kind of society yeah. i don't know well, then what if he turns around and says no she's a 25 year old ex-supermodel i'll say then you are, and no i'll turn around and tell him but use my legal skills and say you're breaching the law Mm. But if so I can't law, give you my consent, if you don't agree with me, let's that. go and see the sheikh. I will do, go. Do, do the scholars really support that kind of view? I will, I, will, I will prompt the scholar himself and look him in the eye and say, Sheikh, please tell me that this verse is not saying what I'm saying. Um, but I'm not afraid to speak. <laughs> Honestly, I'm confident. And I think and our Muslim sisters the in the community, there has been a hijacking of our human rights in Islam that had been given to us 1,400 years ago. Let's mm -hmm. accept that as a matter of reality. No, definitely. And there has been misinterpretation of these kind of verses and then carte blanche to men to kind of do yeah, just about well, anything they want to do. Obviously, With little well. safeguards and backup for us, quite mm -hmm. often when we seek divorce, we don't get support. No, yeah. we don't. It's like, you know, it's, it's very it's easy to get thing. married, but yeah. very difficult to get divorced. Get divorced. So we if I see a sheikh interpreting this more favorably to the men, I would turn around and I promise you I will not go quiet. Let that sheikh kill me in that room, but I will go stand up and speak the truth. <laughs> Let's not go that well, far. Well, no, no, I, no, I, I see it because he might say, you know, this woman is too, too loud and we don't like these loud uh, vociferous type mm -hmm. of women, so let's smack this one to death. You let him do that to me, but I'm going to speak the truth. And I think all of us need to be empowered I think what it to is, stand up and speak. And that's I where think, we're going wrong. I think when it comes to your own individual relationship, obviously you're going to be passionate about it. And you don't know until you're in the same <laughs> situation. Well, what I wanted to go back to was this, you keep repeating that, uh, the, the term orphan. And I've heard this argument before, especially mm. with men. Like, we're all orphans. When we're brought into this world, we're all <laughs> orphans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you have the issue of, you know, when you're a Muslim, and especially if you're a revert, you're technically an orphan because your family aren't Muslim. And, you know, if you've been divorced, then you're an older woman. So again, we can, we can help you and we can, you know, have our needs both met. So, you know, I think what it comes across as is that a lot of the time women create the obstacles and we're not honest to say, look, I find this a bit difficult to deal with. Mm. I haven't been raised. I've, for example, your parents may have been married for 60 years mm. and, you know, had a really committed mm. relationship. I'm not really, I don't really have a reference to having somebody else come into my home and having multiple wives. But what I wanted to ask you is, um, well, I just wanted to state that you know, 47% of men asked um, have stated that they're unhappy in their marriages, which has been a reason for them cheating. Islamically, do we have a concept of cheating or not? No, cheating is not allowed. There are other marriages that can, they can contract to avoid cheating because uh, we all know that there are... Okay, yeah, but what's that's, the definition, that's what's what, the definition, what's of, the definition cheating of cheating exactly? Yeah. Because if he's, got got oh. four <laughs> legal, if he's got four <laughs> permanent wives and, yeah. and goes 50 to have, as well, yeah. then mm -hmm. surely... Is, that cheating. I, I mean, what is our concept of cheating? Are we meant to even be exactly? And are we meant to be informed of every relationship that the male but is on? There, shouldn't there be trust? Isn't that like one of the pillars of, of every marriage? Trust, mm -hmm. respect, and honesty. And honesty yeah. But again, between you know, between the couple, the issue is, and I've heard brothers say this a lot. Yes, I do speak to brothers, shock horror. <laughs> but what they what they will tell you is. It's not that they're cheating, it's that they don't feel the woman has the capacity to take on this knowledge. So if she finds out that her husband that is cheating, no, no, no. well, no, no, let no. me finish, oh, let me finish yeah, and then kill that. me. So <laughs> what will happen is he will he'll purposely not tell her because she'll have a reaction. So there'll Excuse be no dinner me. for five days, for example, <laughs> you know. And well, then you know, he knows that he's doing something wrong. <laughs> exactly. So... It, 
in the interest of preserving the family, he's yeah. not going to say oh, anything. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So but basically, that, that you're lying. Me, so, yeah, so you that, can keep... That, that to exactly me suggests the same thing. that there are far deeper issues than mm. him wanting to have yeah. multiple relationships. There's something a lot deeper going on there. And that's mm. that's like finding loopholes in the law. Exactly. You know? mm. that, that's not... What are you a, cheating? Are you cheating yourself? Are you cheating God? Oh, I, I, I can't tell her because I won't have dinner for five days or she won't yeah, wash she my won't socks or, you know, yeah, that's not... Yeah, she'll be upset with me or whatever. She'll leave, she might leave me. Yeah. She her bags and leave me mm. that's just that that's i don't know that's dishonesty well, so you, go they, ahead they they, they, do, they don't tell because again like you said these are the reasons why they don't tell but the reality is my own observation of what mm. goes on within mm. our communities and seeing how relationships are going in that direction mm. what seems to be the case is that i can't explain why that is and i'm investigating this the biological element of male behavior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of its uh, re marital relations it seems to me the men want to have their cakes and eat it that but don't we all it i like them. cake <laughs> yeah <laughs> not that one cake I yeah, <laughs> they, they were given they are given those options and they yeah. are they're taking it they, they literally they, it's like loopholes yeah, for yeah. them you know what so I, they've seen the it as, is, as though, a, i think a couples need to be honest about what their needs are for some in some relationships you do have some people that have very specific needs and one of those for the man might be that he has a very strong physical need mm. however you want to address it mm. that is something he needs to have an honest conversation with his other half Indeed. about mm. Agreed. and if that those channels are not open then mm. the marriage isn't going to survive other things once you put children into the mix mm. um, jobs other family pressures and things like that there needs to be some sort of clear communication this is what I need yeah. this is what I need from you yeah. this is what you so need so what if Tamara says just an example he comes home and says, dearest Tamara, I want to take on the sister the Jaffe, whatever. <laughs> um, you know, you've been a loyal, fabulous wife. We've got five beautiful kids. We've got the livelihood. Everything is beautiful. But I feel this is something that I want to do. Why? <laughs> because Allah has told me I can. Because why? What do you need? I feel that I need to feel... Um, I feel that I have physical needs, and you know you're busy with your career. Oh, so you're busy with I've the kids. I've got five kids now, and and I'm and I'm and I'm old now, perhaps, and I'm tired, and 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 I've been literally. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm but what just we put aside now. Suddenly. No, it's not aside. That's not it. It's mm. someone. I'm bringing someone into the relationship, so I'm extending the family, and you know we we've got a different relationship. We've been together 25 years. Why are you creating obstacles? Because I feel like like an out of date can of what you know or something. I'm well, just maybe you're you know. the one with the issue. <laughs> I'm just like, this is how some men will feel. It's like, well, why are you taking this so personally? I'm a it's human yeah. being because she we has a right all, we to have feel. rights too. Exactly. We are human mm. beings. Mm. It's like taking taking that out of a person. That's mm. not fair either. Mm. You know, we, we're not just, it's not, you know, the legal system is there to assist us, to help us. Mm. But we also have other, whatever it is, I don't know what you call it. You know, we, we've got you know, psychologies, I've got, you know, got our mentalities, we've got feelings, you know, you've got to take that into consideration too. Yeah. We're so not just, we're not just robots where, so you know, you follow the law, you know. <laughs> if you go into an Islamic centre or a mosque, do you feel that, say you went, you needed to speak to somebody about this issue, do you feel that the scholars are, are open-minded, that they can see things from both sides of the fence? Or do you feel that because they're male, yeah. they're going to side with I'll tell the you male. something. Go we ahead. Don't <laughs> have, we don't have female scholars. We don't have enough female scholars. We haven't had that. We don't have, I mean, we probably had that, I don't know, back in, 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 in history or something, but they weren't even, they were kind of, they were, they were pushed to a side. So they didn't have a voice. To, to so oh, we don't speak so about the hijacking of Islam. They were, we, the, the the, yeah, Islam was hijacked by men, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't, isn't that the case? Well, no, I, mean, I, I have the interpreters, the scholars. Yeah. Most of them are men, so obviously it's going to go to in a you know, certain direction, yeah. but in favour, you know, of, of of. Having said that, men. I know a sheikh who is Muammam, and he shared with me a wonderful, well, shared with us a wonderful story. He came to one of the seminars there. And the brother came up to him and said to him, come on, Sheikh, uh, so and so, I want to marry you to another wife. And I, well, this was within earshot of me. And I'm listening, just watching to see what's going to happen. I really admire that, Sheikh. He turned around to the brother who offered him a new wife and said to him, well, told us the beautiful story of how he met his wife. He's been married to her for 30 years and mm -hmm. he said, I would not exchange her for anybody. But why are we looking at it as exchange? We're not products in the supermarket. Yeah. Why is it not that... 
I mean, look at the state we're in now. You're going to kill me, I can see it. <laughs> but um, there are a lot of divorce and there's a lot of single women out there. And if you're trying to practice your faith, it's very difficult to go out there and meet someone who's established and who can accommodate, you know, your needs. Uh, I'm not talking about physical needs, but, you know, day-to-day -day life. Um, so surely polygamy is almost like a merciful act for both of you that... No, no. So well, yeah, I, mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I personally agree with. Yeah, that. I mean, I, I, I personally like. I, I agree with what you're saying. I just think that, um, you know, let's be realistic. It, it's not going to be for everybody. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, if you want to be in a polygamous relationship, that is entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. If both of you are on board and both of you are mature enough and, and both of you can both parties. then why not? Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying as well, on the flip side of it, is there are, for, for some people, mm -hmm. it is not, from a female's perspective, it is not something she wants to be involved in, for whatever reasons. And, and I don't think it's necessarily, oh, well, she's jealous, or this, this, that, oh, she's putting barriers in the way. No, this is a human being. Mm -hmm. She has feelings. This is not for everybody. She deserves not, respect. Not all she marriages are the same. You know, and that th there's a there's a different dynamic to it. So, okay, Tamara. Why Tamara? Why picking on me? No, because you know, it, I, I, you know what? I think what we're doing here is a great thing. We're discussing things that aren't necessarily discussed in the community, yeah. especially when we have young teenage, um, young girls mm -hmm. who are going to be mm -hmm. getting married. So yeah. I think we need to show all angles. So mm -hmm. I'm just bouncing ideas. I'm all picking right. on you. Okay. So <laughs> basically, would you? Um, would you prefer your husband to be in a polygamous relationship or in a mutta? Because sometimes women have issues with the permanent side of it, mm. as opposed to mutta that is a contractual, you know, uh, based on Temporary time, etc. It's yeah. just like for pleasure, but not necessarily as a companion, someone that he would consider to be a soulmate mm -hmm. or something. Uh, if I if I would choose, yeah. if I have, I'm going to ask choice. each of you that. So. <laughs> is that is that like no, but the if. I mean, some people may think see Motta as being more of um, people, um, people see Motta as being more shady. Oh, we're going to come to that. It's got a bit we're of a, you know, well, what, would you what would you prefer? What would you prefer? If you had a choice between polygamy and Motta, <laughs> and it's between those two, you can't say <laughs> none. I, 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 <laughs> I was going to say neither. For me, it doesn't, no. It's, no. it's not so okay no. for me. It yeah. doesn't Either. suit my nature. It's well, not for, for me. For, 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 yeah. for me, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'd really? rather <laughs> to be. I'm, I'm flexible with both because I accept that Allah has designated, providing that my questions are answered. Are we complying mm -hmm. with the rules in accordance with the Quran? If the answer is mm -hmm. yes, please go ahead. Even if he does tell me that he had half a dozen matters, it wouldn't bother me because as a busy professional, to be honest, I don't want to be having a large mammal to be caring for 24-7, seven, seven days. A large mammal. Large mammal. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, would, I love the idea that there is a, there's a sister somewhere else who's going to be looking after him part-time mm -hmm. and I'll look after him part-time. But part -time. it's like we're like looking after we him. Can what, share. what does he do <laughs> to be looked after? I mean, yeah. I don't know. It depends on how you're looking at marriage again. Mm -hmm. If you married someone because he's a friend, he's a companion he's someone that that you can share you know you can sit down mm -hmm. and chat yeah. with you know mm -hmm. for hours and you know watch movies together whatever he's a mm -hmm. friend you don't want your friend to betray you you want you don't want your best friend to come and one day and tell you hey you're not my best friend there's anymore time, I have another best friend there's a time issue too like I understand what you're saying it's almost like a part-time thing but then yeah. if you're if you've got kids and you also work and he also works and then he's got to fit in not just you but also the needs of somebody else yeah. how much yeah. of, I mean we don't get a yeah. Yeah, and this, especially in, in this, this day, day and age, in this anyway. society. So yeah, is that going right. to be impacted? So hold on, there are sisters out there that, um, for whatever reasons, neglect their marriages and husbands, mm -hmm. and their husbands have needs, so what do we do? It depends on what kind of marriage it is. Okay, and also, if you had daughters, or some of you may do, would you allow your daughter to be in a mutta? I would rather she was in a mutter than doing zina. Yep. Because that mutter can lead to a permanent marriage, which it happens for a lot of the students, young students from universities. Mm -hmm. Lots of wonderfully successful marriages that I have come across that go go back 15, 20 years mm -hmm. have started with meta because they were at uni. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is a basic human need. It but is, they don't know is. they want this for it's a like, permanent You know, problem. and mm -hmm. for dating, simple simple thing as dating could mean that, you know, for them to go in a halal environment mm -hmm. to date, to get to know each other, 
you know, and, and, and don't tell me that, you know, because if you're, if you're not going to allow it to happen mm -hmm. altogether, yeah. it, will, it will happen in a haram way. It will happen anyway, way. but yes. in a haram way. What about yeah. you? You would be okay with that? Um, I mean, I don't, I, I can't really say, like, I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't really, I've not, it's not that I've not given it much thought, but it's something that I would have to sort of understand for myself, because the thing about it as a parent, you can bring your own prejudices, prejudices yeah, in. Yeah, your, mm -hmm. your own baggage. And for yeah. me, I, I have to, I'd have to be coming from a place where, you know, it's about their their needs and having those needs met so and also i th i do find that especially if you're a girl you get labeled you do yeah, you for do. Uh, being well, in a mortar it's yeah. no people presume things that are yeah. happening and it's almost i mean it's almost like it's one rule for the males yeah, yeah, it's yeah, okay yeah. and another for females but i think you know if you have teenage children especially in this environment where from like 11 years old they're mm. dating and if you're not dating mm. something's wrong with you mm. then got, it is something that we need to consider but not for the sake of dating if you know what I mean it needs to be something that inshallah will lead to something bigger well I think there has to be a level of understanding of what it's actually for and that is where you have an open conversation with your child um, and you have to be able to say, like, you know, be realistic. Children have, you know, these kids are going to grow up to become adults. They're going to have needs. So you have to be realistic about, you know, what are the options? Okay, well, this is something that is within our, within our um, religion. This is something that we believe in. Mm -hmm. And sort of have, you know, actually understand what, what it's there for and the reasons it's there. What's yeah. also interesting is how do we think that, would men allow their daughters to do it? This is an interesting point, and I find this from the uh, other schools of Islam that uh, hate the uh, school of Ahl al-Bayt followers. One of the biggest insults they use is mut'a, children of mut'a, because they regard mut'a as haram. Mm. Notwithstanding the fact that it's in the Qur'an, it's verse 24 mm -hmm. of a uh, chapter of, about the women, mm -hmm. the women's chapter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think... Our own community started to look at this word as a dirty thing to do. Mm -hmm. So would you allow, because one of the things they do to, to, to hurt our uh, uh, ulama is they phone them up in one of these shows and they say, would you let me let me have your daughter for a mut'a? Like in a in a, in a, in in, a rude insulting insult, way. Yeah. 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 So and I think we're becoming as a community kind of like a bit resistant to this idea. Mm -hmm. And then in in YouTube as well, one of the ways of the, that they try to undermine the Iranian regime is they have this video that everyone told me yeah. about because everyone who knows I am a follower mm -hmm. of Al Bayt always brings the mut'a mm -hmm. as a point mm -hmm. of debate mm -hmm. with me mm -hmm. and they told me have you seen how it's uh, these women are like effectively prostitutes in in mm -hmm. Iran and mm -hmm. that like that and I thought no as, uh, that that is not the situation because for a starter women aren't really biologically let's be honest uh, fit to be multi-partnered the women are not right for that it's not right for us I, I think, think most I women aren't but there are some people yeah. that do not want to be married just have multiple relationships yeah it, Islam covers everything you yeah, know, it's, a, it's a matter of, of individual person. choice, Thank I God. know. But, but <laughs> I think what we have to be aware of as followers of Ahlul Bayt, mm -hmm. salam, and this is a, a sunnah that Allah designated in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Rasul Salawatullah Ali practiced it. It's the second Khalifa who banned it. Right. And yeah. now the other schools of Islam tend to insult us by saying you are effectively illegitimate children mm -hmm. because you are all children of Mut'a. We are called children mm -hmm. of Mut'a. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so. What is it trying to do then with this mutai? It's trying to prevent one of the sea most serious sins mm. that brings disasters mm -hmm, on humans, mm -hmm. zina. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I wouldn't want my child, 15, 16, 17 year old, to be having 20 partners by the time she's 20. Mm -hmm. Because that is going to have psychological impact on her. Definitely. But at the same time, I don't want her to be uh, committing the biggest no-no in our religion. And so. so Mm. Yeah. So why why isn't it really discussed in our community? Why is it like because we are a little with secret? It. We're insulted with it. We're yeah. told you are children of Mut'a, you are illegitimate. But it's not just that. Yeah. Mut'a is always looked at as a complete taboo. Mm -hmm. And it's looked at as something dirty. Um, and when it's not really dirty, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's just part of life. It's like eating, it's like sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay, and which is you know we have regulations. It's how it's how to go about these this mm -hmm. kind of thing, mm -hmm. and you know it can go wrong, mm -hmm. or it can go right if you're doing it correctly according mm -hmm. to you know to the to those like laws that we have mm -hmm. that God has given us. Mm -hmm. 
Um, which is why, you know, you've got some people come in using that word, oh, they kill children of Mut'a, because, because of this mentality, certain cultures, they look at... People look at it that people way. Are people are associating, people that's what they associate, they associate with. with. Yeah, it's exactly like what you said, I think we're, it's like almost like, don't use the N-word, don't use the N-word, we're very frightened of it. What yeah. does that mean? Does that mean that we're letting our kids do whatever they like and this sort of thing? Mm. So there's quite a lot So of do you think our community is supportive of Mut'a in terms of, say you had an inkling that someone in the community was involved in a Mut'a, would you treat that sister like a second class citizen? No, me or personally how would no. You? No, personally, no, no. Not. I would congratulate her for reviving Sunnat Rasulullah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll give her a big party. <laughs> we'll say we'll give them your address at the end of the we'll show for party. I'll be ululating all the way to the mosque. <laughs> but then, do you? But also on the flip side, you know there are certain sections in our community, and obviously, I'm not trying to bring our community down. But as I said, I want to really reflect on everything on this show that happens um, because we have teenagers and uh, young people who are watching this. But do we feel that men often use abuse motor like we have serial? What would you call them, Mutarids? What, what, <laughs> what would we call them? <laughs> do, do you feel that you know there's some sip, there's some predators out there? Who oh yeah, there are. There are. Yeah, that, that's assuming that girls are, are naive and, and mm. I don't know about today's girls how how you know people are more aware of of these it's things, like relationships. Anything, anything can you know any anything element of abused. the religion can be abused. Mm. It's not just Mutai, It could mm. be you know anything, but. Marriage itself can be abused. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, it is. Like in the Sunni school of thought, I remember um, every Ramadan, there's this big rush for people to get married. And every time I would meet my uh, some of my Sunni friends, I'd be like, oh, how is your husband? No, I'm not with him anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm with Abdul, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, um, <laughs> how, next Ramadan, how is Abdul? I'm not with him anymore. I'm with Abdul. I'm like, well, I can't keep up. So, th and they were saying that, you know, men uh, in the Sunni school of thought can well, of any school of thought abuse Nikara as mm. well so yeah. um, this is an avenue but why aren't we talking about this why why with our young girls and boys this is not being addressed Mota in madrasas it's not even being addressed in a lot of the homes no, well, we, yeah. come, we come from from different cultures yeah. we come with our own packages as well you know cultural packages and these you know determine you know mm. what we how the, the way we view the yeah. you know Mota and, and relationships it's the attitude, it's it's the attitude. but don't you think we as women should make a push because you know we are we are mothers and it's our children that are going to be affected by this we there's a big push for um, people to date. The pressure to date is mm. unbelievable. I mean, I remember my mm. son at nine years old was having a nervous breakdown. Five girls were chasing him in school with a <laughs> phone number. <laughs> and a parent came to me and said, uh, let's take them on a date. We'll take them to Costco coffee and sit there. I was flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with the time. And I'm like, OK, well, I kept saying, when you're older and you want to get married and First of all, get a job because I'm not paying for the coffee. Yeah. So I think we need to make a, maybe we need to do a push to educate our young people. I think we need to educate sisters because from what I'm getting here, it's a bit of hostility towards polygamy. No, I mean, not I think, for me. no, I think it's, <laughs> whatever, it's whatever you want to do as a couple when you're mm. both happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if it's not personally something that you would want to be in, at the end of the day, you still have a level of respect for other people's choices. Mm. And I think men need to understand that, okay, even though it's an option, then no one in their right mind wakes up and says, you know, I want to be in a mutta today, or I, I, you know, it's so easy for women to be, I want to be in a polygamous relationship, I'm so okay with it, because he might bring someone home that really doesn't, you don't really like, doesn't fit in with your lifestyle, but, I think we should make a push on having this discussed more in our community. Mm, and certainly, who certainly. does it really benefit, do you think? Do you think women benefit from mortars well, or polygamy? Well, mortar is between a man and a woman, so mm -hmm. obviously... There is some benefit. <laughs> there is some benefit. Mm. Well, I hope so. If a woman accepts <laughs> her, her then she must be finding some benefits in it yeah. for herself. Mm. Otherwise, she wouldn't be... Yeah, she wouldn't be going into something like well, that. I've had girls who have said to me they're in Mutas because it's a contractual agreement and every time they renew the contract they get gifts. Oh, nice. Well, well that, that's you one benefit. That <laughs> <part of laughs> it, I, well, I think that's also, good. I think also the, the sort of um, society that we're living in today as well, there's an economical point mm. to it as well because, I mean, it's expensive to 
you know, if, you're, if you are legally married to someone, it's expensive having a wedding, living together. There's all these living costs that we now have to associate. So for some people, like Kim, you mentioned about stu you know, the students. Students, and stuff, yeah, clearly. Um, it, it makes sense. You know, it's, it's an option that's there. It's, it can be, you know, well, maybe they can't afford to get married, but they do know they want to be together. So they're mm -hmm. in this mutha, they are going out, mm -hmm. they are halal for each other. Mm -hmm. The intention is to get married, big wedding, big party, all that sort of stuff, but they're just not in the position to do it at the moment. So, mm -hmm. I've seen you know, many successful marriages, uh, start, that start off in with her, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. from university mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to society. So, what, going back to polygamy, why do you think it's hidden in our community? Because I can think of some people that I know that are in polygamous relationships, mm -hmm. but, but it's not. Heard. It's not something That's they not go out and, and, and... But if it's help. okay, why, why don't we talk about it? Well, I think, I don't know. I mean, from a, from a female's perspective, I think a lot of females will be saying, well, what does that say about me? Yeah. Because I'm oh, not enough as a woman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not enough as... Uh, me, yeah. myself, is not enough for him judged. that he's gone out and found somebody else. Mm. So what does that say about me? So I think there's a... You know, there's kind fear, of a fear of being judged. Yeah, in a certain way, and we are really judgmental as a community. No, so, sorry to as say it, guys. Altogether. Yeah, as human beings and everything, we are really judgmental. You know, there's a lot of. I think there's some documentary on Channel Four about polygamous relationships, and mm. the way it was portrayed was, um, you know, in quite a negative way. So I think there's a lot of prejudice around it. Do you feel like um, we're in the mosque all looking at each other thinking, mm, is she? Is she? <laughs> isn't she? <laughs> Who's is it, next? Is it really that common? I don't know. Is well, it? I think I that think it's, it's, it's I, there. I think, it? I I think but it's not known. It's kept, like, I, like you're saying, it's kept secret. But because then what, of the do, we, do we have to tell people? Like, do we have to tell people? I think there's a certain kind to? of I don't know if you need to, but oh, isn't there a to? sense of liberation? Like, why do you have to keep a secret? But it, yes. why is it it's not necessarily a secret? It's just this is private, this is between you No, and but it's it's what people. other people think, as you said, like you don't want to walk in as number three, number four, <laughs> number two, <laughs> and then everyone's looking at you like, oh, you homewrecker you, and you're like, well, no, here are my reasons, and he's yeah. accommodating. Yeah. I just feel like... There's, there's this is a taboo that I really is, want to break is, with it, with because it. as you said, Tamara, there, there's um, obviously, especially to do with Muta, there's a need for it. Mm -hmm. There obviously is a need, otherwise Allah wouldn't have created it. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe we should take the the initiative, the initiative and gauntlet and say, you know, let's put things out in the open mm -hmm. and discuss. Um, talking about people who are in our community, and um, who are engaged in these things. You know, with every community, there's a lot of gossip about who's in the motto, who's not. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that? Because I've been in situations where it's like, oh, do you know, sister, shh, shh, in a majlis. The first, first step would be to stop gossiping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <But> it, is, <laughs> it is, but it is, it, it yeah. is a very female trait that you get no, two and three don't people you say going. That. Well, it is. It's, on camera, right? No, yeah, but just come on, cool. there's certain <laughs> people in our well, community on, that no, do that. Why are, why are they whispering? Women talk, you know. <laughs> why are they talking about it? Why are they whispering about it? Because it is something that's taboo. It's like saying, Oh, did you see such and such? Yeah, well, she had, you know, her ears pierced twice. Oh, is that no. the is it, kind is it of really the women who talk about other women being in Matara? Is it the men judging both. as well. well? Oh, she's been in so many Matara's. Oh, I'm not going to marry her. I'm going to go and marry some, you know, nice, pure girl who has never been mm. in See, now you're putting labels on it. You said pure. <laughs> yeah, but that's exactly what they say. That's how they look at it. You so know, I, I want someone who has never been, you know, in a relationship, someone I can, you know, just be for me, mm. basically. So I think... Isn't that uh, the men who judge you? Should which judge us? us? Back to the uh, point of uh, why a lot of men uh, become writers and worship Allah sincerely. And uh, in certain schools of thought in Islam, they uh, are looking forward to having 70 hu when you know mm -hmm. they go to heaven, mm -hmm. they have 70 wives, all, you know, all them mm -hmm. 70 virgins and all that. Mm -hmm. um, Really, I have narrations which will change everything. I think <laughs> oh I have read goodness. this, and I, I, I know that down. in my mind. This narration is true. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi says that a righteous woman, woman who really complies with all the rules, and she's a mu'min in every sense of the word, believer, 
in the day of judgment, Yom al Qiyamah, Allah will make those women more beautiful than Hur al Ain. Mm -hmm. So, the same concept of wanting that fresh, new, um, whatever. Men are very competitive by nature, biologically. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't want any place that another man had been in because, like, maybe that woman loves that man more than me, and they have this paranoia about that. I'm very competitive in yeah, everything. Sorry. I'm like, sorry. Um. <laughs> yeah, but that is a biological thing because yeah. what he's thinking of is his progeny. Is this, if I'm, you know, this woman is going to have my children, that's kind of, it is a biological thing that yeah. that, that sort of stems from, so. Yeah, yeah, so that, 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 that's the point about the uh, multiple relations for women and mm -hmm. why they want to have a brand new wife, as it were, as mm. opposed to one who has been married before. I think, I think society is a bit harsh towards women generally, whether it's, in, you know, Muslim societies mm -hmm. or, or whatever, non-Islamic societies, generally speaking. You know, if a girl goes, you know, has many relationships in a, even non-Islamic, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. then then she's called a certain word that I'm not going to say here today yes. on no, camera. No, please don't. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it's mm. um, you know, it's generally speaking, you know, society is a bit harsh towards women, judgmental. Yeah. So that was a really intense and exciting discussion. Um, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the program. Hope you'll meet us next time. Salam alaikum. <laughs>